Hello, Heidi. You are the only one connected. Can you listen to me? Yes, teacher. Hey, how are you doing? Fine, teacher. And you? I'm doing really good. It's uh, Wednesday, and we are going to start today our new section. And I would like to know, Heidi, if you have already finished the midterm. And how was it? Or if you have any question. Uh, yes, teacher, the middle uh, finish. And nice. the, yes, and the one section in the me falta. It's missing. In the section, uh -huh, in the sex in the three, three. Mm -hmm. Pero no puedo ver cuál es para hacerle la pregunta, teacher. Si le puedo capturar la pantalla, se la voy a mandar. Great, yes. In case you have any question or you want to ask about any specific one, just write it down and then, and then you ask, okay? That's not a problem. We can okay. always double check that, okay? So welcome, Thank Miguel. You, Thank you for asking. Welcome, Miguel. Welcome, Jorge. Hi, teacher. Good How evening. are you? Good evening. How are you doing? Fine, fine. And you, teacher? I see here that I'm doing good. Thanks so much for asking. <laughs> And what about you, Jorge? How are you doing? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Ready? I'm ready. I'm awesome. sorry to be to that uh, to, to didn't hear last week because I was busy I imagine. at the office. Yeah, I imagine. And it is understandable, okay? So whenever you have uh, problems connecting, I always invite you to check the video or if you have, um, whenever you have some time off, okay? You can always check the videos, okay? But thank okay. you so much. Well, guys, if you have any specific question in regards of any section on the platform, don't hesitate to ask. I will appreciate if you can do it, okay? Let me start with today's class. Uh, yesterday, we um, didn't finish a topic which I consider is really interesting because it has many aspects that we need to cover. And I would like to keep talking about it today. And this is about uh, relative clauses, but we are going to add something extra. We are going to finish the reading, which is pending, and also the reading about Harry Potter, and also one the first lesson for section number four. Okay, because today we are starting week number three. Even though uh, it's not Monday, but since we started on what on Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday, so that means that today is our first day, week number three. All right, so let me start displaying some exercises. For this, I want you to help me to solve these uh, exercises. And then I want to take maybe like a couple of minutes to discuss about this. Yesterday, we were practicing creating two single sentences and then creating uh, one relative clause, okay? And we have mentioned that we have relative pronouns which we need to use so we can create a relative clause. So we need a, a relative pronoun to create a relative clause. And relative pronouns are, the most common are, we have said which, who, that, which are the most common. And we can also say whom if, uh, if it's possible. And there are others that we are not gonna talk about today. In this exercise, we are going to use only who, which, or that, which are the ones that we have already discussed in a way and also is suggested on the video, on the platform. Can you do me a favor, uh, Miguel? Can you read the example we have on the screen? The example, letter A. She chose the book. She wanted the boy then. She closed the books that she wanted to buy. Dubai. Thank you so much. So she chose the books. Sentence number one. Second sentence, she wanted to buy them. Second sentence. 
Now, how do we create one single relative clause? Using, in this case, uh, one complex sentence, and this is the one. It says, she chose the books, and then we use that because it's objects, and we want to add mm -hmm. info about books she wanted to buy. We do not say which, uh, or we don't say that she wanted to buy them because we already mentioned books. So the object them is unnecessary, okay? But then we're creating only one sentence, which is the complex one, which is, which is a relative clause. Now, this is the thing. Help me, please. Let's solve this. Number or letter B. We ate the sandwiches. Jack made them. Second sentence. How can we combine the two simple sentences into one? Okay? Who wants to volunteer and who wants to try Sorry, teacher. Uh, uh, there are much, much uh, noise. There was background noise. I already, uh, you know, tried to help on that. Okay. So whenever you're not speaking, just go ahead and, and make, make sure it's off. Your mic is off. So let's work on this, guys. Let's solve it because I want to continue with the next lessons, next uh, um, topics, but I want to finish this. I know it's really, um, I don't know how it is for you, if it is challenging, me, easy, or confusing. Huh? Go ahead, letter me, me B. Me, teacher. Mm -hmm. Me, teacher. Thank you. We ate, we ate the sandwich. Jack made them. Okay, and how, we, how can we make one single sentence? Using a relative pronoun. Uh, we ate the sandwich, which uh, made, which, uh, because it's, it's uh, something, it's uh -huh. a thing. Okay, yeah, which? Which made them, made, mm -hmm. which, which made, um, no, I don't know. Take a look at this one. After that, it's okay to use the subject in this case. Or, it's okay because we are not talking about the subject. We're talking about a noun, which in this case is true. sandwiches. So it's okay to say Jack again. So how can we say it? Yes, go ahead, please. Sure. Uh -huh. um, I've seen the sentences is... Uh, uh, Jack made the sandwiches. Uh, who who ate them? Mm, okay, so. Oh yeah, would... okay, uh, Jack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we ate the sandwich, which made uh, by Jack. Mm, interesting. <laughs> okay. What about if we use the, the two participation just said are very close, but then what about if we add the relative pronoun and then we add the subject? Because we can, so let's think about this. Sandwiches is the object, right? We ate the sandwiches, okay? So we want to add more info about sandwiches, which means that in our second sentence, we are going to delete the object. What is the object in the second sentence? Object is them. So we need to delete when we don't want to say them. So how can we say it? We ate the sandwiches, which, look at the example. She chose the books, she wanted to buy them. She chose the books that she wanted to buy. Very similar example. How can we make them the letter B? Pay close attention to the to the spelling. We ate the sandwich uh, which just made them. Okay, you are like 95% close, Miguel. You added oh. one word which is unnecessary in the second sentence. You only okay. added one word. Re remove one word you just said and that's gonna be perfectly fine. 
Okay. So how do we say it then? We help me please. Sandwich, which? Oh, is it we we ate the sandwiches? Who made them? Who substitute? No. Yeah. You who is a is a re, repla, replace? No, how say replace? Replace. <laughs> Jack. Replace. Replace. Replace the Jack. Yeah. Now let me ask you this because oh, I see wish, what. Wish. Okay. Wish made them. Mm -hmm. Oh, a big, uh, maybe, maybe we ate the sandwich uh, that, that them made. But we are omitting something here because take a look at this. If I say, my first question is, what do I want to add information about? If I want to add information about the subject, then I want to use who. But in this sentence, I'm not adding info about the sandwich. I am, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not adding info about the subject. I am adding information about the sandwiches. So in this case, it's not about subject, it's about the sandwiches. So what do we say then? Uh, Miguel was really close. Brice, do you want to uh, help us? Uh, and the final is Jack made that. Hmm. Okay, I can see. Let me, I'm going to help you with this one because we want to, we want to remove, we want to delete the object, which is them. Sandwiches is the object. We ate the sandwiches and then Jack made them. So if I want to add more information about the sandwiches, then I want to remove them. So how do I do it? We ate the sandwiches, which Jack made. That's it. We do not say them because it's unnecessary. Because oh. it was already mentioned. And Miguel said, we ate the sandwiches, which Jack made them. And them is not necessary because it's understood. It's explicit. Okay. We don't need to mention them. Okay. So how does it sound for you if I say, uh, we ate the sandwiches uh, which Jack made. Clear, right? Nothing else needed in that sentence. As the previous one, she chose the books. She wanted to buy them. She chose okay. the books that she wanted to buy. We don't say them because it's already mentioned books. Okay, so it's, it is unnecessary. Okay, so in this case, I have to say what? Uh, we, uh, let me see, let me type it. We... Sorry, it's capital letter. We ate the sandwiches. Sand, sand, which is so we had the sand. Uh, which I think it was Jack. What was the name? I don't see it. Made. Was it Jack? Maybe made. made. That's it. You don't need to add anything extra. It is unnecessary made. Why is it unnecessary? Because uh, them is already mentioned by the sandwiches. So that's the same thing. So what about the next one? What about letter, letter C? I am doing some work. I have finished, mm -hmm. finished the work. Me teacher. Okay, go I'm ahead. doing some work that I have to finish. I like it, I like it. I'm doing some work that I have to finish today. Exactly, you don't mention it. It is unnecessary because we know it's work when we're referring to. So I'm doing some work that I have to finish today. We don't say it. Okay, good, I like it. So that one is perfectly fine. What about letter D? Teacher, please write. Oh, you want me to write it down? Okay, no problem. Let me try. <laughs> okay, uh, like this, I am, or am in this case, oops, um, doing some work 
I don't, then I connect the second clause that I have to, that I, that I have to, I don't say, uh, I, don't, I have to finish. I don't say it. And I just finish my sentence saying today, period. Only one sentence. And I am saying the same. Look at this one. I am doing some work that I have to finish today. That was perfectly. Thank you so much. What about letter letter B? She's a no woman. I often see her when I go to the shop. How do I create? Teacher, I mm -hmm. will try. Uh, she's an old woman, which which I see when when I go to the shop. That is which... 90, 99% <laughs> correct. So this is something that I want to suggest you change. What do you think about another relative pronoun? Because Who? this time, exactly, exactly. Because we're talking about the she, woman. She, oh, Can you say it again? Old, uh, she's an old woman who I see when I go to the shop, I think. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry, I was covering. Yeah, you said it. So she, okay. she's an old, an old uh, woman who I, I see. Who, I, who I often, because we don't need, I often mm. see, well. we, don't, we don't say her, it's an answer, when I go to the shop. There you go. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Nelsi. That's a good, good one. Okay. What about he's an actor? A lot of people like him. How do we create that one? Use that. You can use that for people, yes, but then it's recommended to use who. How can we make it? He's an actor that a lot of people like. Yes, or we can say he's an actor that uh, who a lot of people like. You can say that or who. Sounds like if it is recommended to use who because he's actor and actor is person. However, that we have said that is also accepted for people. Okay, so both are okay. So let me say it again, as you said it. He's an actor that a lot of people like. Very good. Uh, what about letter F? It's a magazine. I read it sometimes. Uh -huh. It's a magazine that I read it sometimes. You see, there you go. Very good. Yeah, it makes sense. Sounds natural. When you say it, you feel as if it's being said, you know, without any, any extra effort. It's a magazine that I read sometimes. That's it. We don't need to say it because we're talking about the magazine. Okay, we, need to, we don't need to say it. And the magazine is that object, is it. Good, I think it's not necessary for, for me to write it down. What about letter G? Who wants to try with letter G? She was wearing a red dress. Uh, who, who wears it? for Paris. Okay, my first, the question is, what do we want to add information about? Is it about oh, she or about the? No, no, it's a red dress. Okay, so how do uh, I say? She, she was wearing a red dress, uh, which or that, which or that, was she wears it for Paris. Very, very close. You just need to remove the object, it. Don't say it because it is a dress and you previously mentioned. How can you say it? She was wearing and then a red dress. That, as you said it, that 
she wears and then wears with for for yeah, Paris. Exactly. You got it. Very good. Paris. No need to say it. Very good. There you go. So this is uh, what I wanted to share. Guys, thank you so much. I didn't write this, the E and the F because they're easy, okay? If somebody wants to write it write in, write in down, is uh, he's an actor who a lot of people like or that a lot of people like. And F, it's a magazine, which or that I read sometimes, that's it. Now, we're going to work in the last part of this topic and let me change. Maybe you want to screenshot this one so you have it. I give you 10 seconds in case you want to do it. All right, let's move on. Take a look at this one. What about our next exercises? Let's see? Okay, here we go. Today and this time, we are going to use only who or which. Okay, look at the example. We chose the hotel. It seemed to be the nicest. What about the relative clones? We chose the hotel, which seemed to be the nicest. That's the example. Let's finish the next one, guys. Come on, help me out, please. Yeah. She spoke to the man. He was standing next to her. Now, who... Am I adding information about? Is it about the a person or an object or a thing? So how can we create the, the letter B? Any volunteer? Sorry. She spoke, she spoke to the man. And he, who, who is standing next to her? Exactly. Very good. Exactly. That's the answer. As you can see in this time, we, we say, uh, we don't want to say he again because he is the man, right? Mm -hmm. So we say she spoke, uh, spoke uh, to the man who... And then directly was standing, oh. standing next to her, next to her. And why do we say it like this? And why don't we say he this time? Easy, because the who is replacing, in this case, he. We cannot say who he, because it would be redundant. Because the man is the one we are talking about now. We don't want to repeat he. It won't, it won't sound natural. So the best way, as you said it is, she spoke to the man who was standing next to her. Good, I like it. What about not letter C? What do we say here? Me, teacher. Thank you so much. I read the letters which came in the morning post. Son, you got it, very good. We don't want to say they because letters is basically uh, what they are referring when they say they, okay, they came. What the letters? So we don't want to say they again. So this is exactly the way you said it. Very good. So let me write it down. Uh, I, I think it's I read the, the letters, which, uh, came in the morning, I think it said, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning post. Okay, like this. Good, what about next one, the next one? He likes the other people, they work in his office. How do we say it? <laughs> uh, okay, he likes the other people who work in his, um, yeah, who work in his office. Yep, very good. You got it. Thank you so much. I'm not going to write it down this time, so we keep going. What about uh, letter E? Now that you have, what about letter E? Who wants to help me with letter E? She's that singer who was on television last night. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. You got it. Very good. What about letter F? Next week, there is a festival which happens in the village every summer. Okay, good. Thank you. I like it. And what about letter G? I pay the bills who came yet. Who came yesterday? Um, we I are... think that is the, the verb. Oh, it's by... Okay. Which, which, which. Exactly. It's which, which because uh... we're talking about the bills. The bills. Oh. It's, it's not Mr. Bills, uh, the god of what, what is of destruction from Goku. No, this is the bills, the bills, the bills. You don't, you don't like Dragon Ball? No, I think nobody likes watching that series. But then bills in this case is just the paper, you know? Bills is not, it's not the name, it's not a name, okay? So good, thank you so much. Well, guys, do you have any question, anything or any that you want to ask before we move on? All right. If you, by any case, have a question, don't hesitate to ask. We're gonna read about Harry Potter. Have you already read this paragraph on the platform? Yes? Do you like yes. these books? Have yeah. you seen this yes. movies? Okay, yes. I'm glad. <laughs> um, yeah, all movies. <laughs> Interesting, okay. So we're going to read, and there are a few things that I want to mention about this because this reading is just great plus is um for me it's a very inspirational you know reading because all what it says and maybe if you already did it you know what i'm talking about okay and how its writer you know started writing and creating all this story that has been a whole success let me share the screen and I want to ask you to help me reading, okay? This text, give me a second. I'm trying to display it. Hold on, here we go. If you have already read it, you uh, might have found a new vocabulary, the magic of Potter. So I'm going to need, Nelsie, you start reading at any point, you stop reading and mention somebody else's name to continue, okay? Please. Okay. Um, there was a time when no one knew the name, the name Harry Potter. Now, the adventure of the, this extraordinary student at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft in Wizard, Wizardry are read in over 40, 45 language, including Russian, the day, and even ancient Greek. No one, no one can explain the Harry Potter phenomenon. No, not even Jake K. Rowling, his creator. Jake K. Rowling was born in England in 19. 65 from a young age. She knew she wanted to be a reader. Reader. When she was six, she wrote her first history about a rabbit that gets sick. At the school, she used to make a, she used to make up stories to tell her friends. After graduating. Uh, from a college, she worked as a secretary, but she didn't give it up her dream. She spent her lunch, her lunch hour reading, reading histories, mainly for adults. Then in 1990, on a train trip to London, she got the idea for the boy wizard. She says he just appeared in her head. And she saw create a whole cast of unique characters uh, to help that, uh, to help, uh, um, I can see, uh, uh, 
Maybe uh, is Harry Battle the forces uh, of darkness. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so Harry. much. Okay. Yeah, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I wanted to uh, continue. I, I apologize. I wanted to stop you right there so I can go over some uh, some things that I have identified. I appreciate your reading. Thank you so much for that. Um, look, take a look at this one uh, here. Let me see. I'm going to use this one. This word, um, this one is wizardry, wizardry, wizardry. And uh, well, witchcraft and wizardry are most of the time together, okay? There are two things that go together, like brujería and hechicería. And this one is red. I heard you said read, but this is mm. red because it's passive voice. So I okay. read, I read in over, and this one is languages because it's plural, okay? So if I say language, it's only one. But if you wanna say the plural, yes. make sure you say languages, is, languages. So only one language, more than one language. Languages. Yes, yes, yes. Languages is yes. important to mention the is sound at the end. Languages. Awesome. This one is 19. I heard <laughs> nine. Because it's 19. 90, it's 19 <laughs> with the, with the in sound, 19, 19. 19, I heard 65. 90 or something like that. So I, the, the, the exaggeration is thing is, <laughs> is necessary. So we don't say number 90, we say 19, which is 19, not 90, right? And then we keep going. This one, this is story, which is basically <laughs> story, no history, because history is a narration or is about something that happened in the past, like war or America's, America's discovery, you know, stuff like that. So that's history, but this one is story, like Toy Story, which is just a tale, just, a, you know, a short, uh, let's say, tale, for example. What else I wanted to say? Oh, writing, 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 writing stories. And then everything else was good. So I appreciate it. This one, this word, graduating, the D sound sounds like J. Like when we say education, graduation, graduating, like J. Like when you say it's graduating, it's like the That's same waiting. the same pronunciation as when you That's say waiting. education. We don't say education. We say education, uh, graduation, graduating. The same sound That's as when you waiting. say as when you say horario, which is a schedule. Sure. A schedule. That sound the the D sound like a j sound. So we say graduating, education, graduating. Like in this case. I want to mention something else, guys. Well, as you can see here, we have after. And right after this one, this word, which is a preposition, we have the verb in ing. So this is a tip that I want to say. If you already knew this, awesome. But if you didn't know of this, maybe you want to write it down. When you are write, writing a text after any preposition, if you want to mention one verb, it is mandatory you say it in ing form okay that's that's by law okay that's the way it is you might say so how do i know it's a preposition well there's a list of prepositions but we might want to double check but the the, the rule says as a preposition we add ing like this one and we might find others in the text as of now i want to thank i think nelsi for reading we're gonna keep reading and then we can talk about maybe meaning and other stuff. I want Nelsi to choose the next person. Choose the next one, but I, I think I have to move this text. Hold on, let me see, how can I scroll it up a little bit? It doesn't, let me do it, come on. It's just an image, that is why. Maybe like this, uh, very little. But then, uh, Nelsi, choose the next person, please, to keep reading. Uh, Novia. Novia. Okay. Novia, thank you so much. Let's start from number four, please. Novia, maybe you can see it. She kept. Sorry, yeah, I understand you. 
I'm sorry, let me try to make it bigger. The thing is like when I make it bigger, <laughs> it disappears. Okay, I'm I'm going to I'm going more to read bigger, please. More I'm, <laughs> zoom out. I'm going to read only the more last bigger, please. Okay, bigger. Let me uh, it's bigger. She kept working on the on the story while she was teaching English okay, in Portugal, okay. where she married. Now continue right here. Give me a sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you where to start. Hold on, let me. Get here now, now, let's see, yes. Now, had, let me finish number four. Had her first child and divorced a year later. When she returned to England, she brought back a suitcase of Harry Potter stories. Start with from number five and on, please. Okay. Uh, after returning home, she was broke and living in a small Chap grab grandpa apartment. She continued writing and in nineteen ninety nine five finished the first book in the in the series Harry Harry Potter Harry Potter and the uh, and the uh, Sorcerer's Stone. It was published in 1997 and became an unexpected bestseller. All right, thank Continue. you so much. Yeah, we can leave it like that. Thank you so much, Anu. We appreciate it. Okay. This word, how do we pronounce this word? What's the pronunciation? Guys, anybody? <laughs> okay. Cramp. How? Cramp. Cramp. Okay, it's cramp. But then how do we pronounce the ED here? This ED, how do we pronounce this ED? Who remembers? Cramp. I, I remember I gave you the letters. I said final sounds with P. We what do we say? I said D, T, or E. What do you remember? Crampy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Maybe we want to double check the sound. Oh, cramped. 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 Very good. Now you are talking. Cramped. Yes, cramped. Awesome. What about this one? How do we pronounce this other word here? How do we pronounce this ED sound? How do we pronounce? Finished. Exactly, finished with the T sound. Good, what about this other one? Do we say published? Do we say published? with the D or do we say published with the T published. or do we say published it? What do we say? Published. Mm -hmm. with, with the T? Exactly. The same as finished. We say published because the sound is like this SH. We say T. Remember that is very essential. So cramped, finished, published. Okay, and what about this one? This one, the, the last. Exactly, what about this other one here? Unexpect. How do we pronounce the ED? This ED, how do we pronounce it? Unexpect. Unexpected. And it's with ID. With it, exactly, with ED. Why do we pronounce oh. it with ED? Uh huh. Yes. The word ending in T. Exactly. There you go. Because the the base word is expect with a T sound. We say expected extra syllable. Awesome. Very good. So let's keep remember that. That is really important. Okay. Let's finish this, Alex. Let's finish uh, the number six, please. Okay. Uh -huh. Rowling's life has changed uh, dramatic, dramatically 
I don't, I don't. Know. Grammatically, she has became become inter internationally famous and now earns around forty millions a year. She remarried, had a second child, and currently lives is uh, Scotland. In Scotland. Okay. Lives Scotland. Okay, good. Thank you so much. So uh, this pronunciation is T or D? And change. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> With the D, yes, change. Very good. Okay. And this this one, uh, Alex, we don't pronounce the letter A. It's dramatically. Dramatically. Uh, the A is mute. It doesn't produce any sound. And this word is earned, like when you earn money, when you earned, no ear, it's earned. And then lives, lives with the lives. Just imagine, guys. I mean, this is a story that I, I read it and I said, wow, this is this is cool. What do you think about her? What do you think about this this writer? Any, any impression, any insight from this story that we just read? Does it, does it inspire you? Have you lived in a cramped yes. apartment and all of a sudden you make 40 million, you know, a year? What does it, what can you, what are your thoughts? Tell me. Right up. Give, me, uh, give me your ideas. What do you think about this story in general? What does it tell you? I think that it's a wonderful history because um, it's, a, it's a biography of a wonderful woman, a super wonderful woman that uh, he never renounced in her dreams and, and to work day by day by, by dreams and her projects and to work very hard every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that idea. I agree with that. She never gave up, right? Uh, on, her, yes. on, on, on her dreams. Okay, what else? I want to hear at least two more opinions in general. What do you understand? Do you relate with this? Does it uh, tell you anything for your life? Have you ever been like saying, no, this is not gonna work. I'm not gonna do this. No, this is not for me. And then you simply give up. What's your impression? Teacher, I watch every movie, is a uh, series. <laughs> Yes, and uh, the growth <laughs> of, of the writer is is good. Is in the coming is uh, in a uh, little voice and is for for chills. The movie for chills is 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 the tram is is so so because uh, next movie uh, I am watch. Uh, is the drunk is uh, serious, is uh, interesting, and the the growth, the growth of the grider is is uh, the the grider uh, have a uh, more ideas, uh, experience, um, description, than the place uh, because is. Is the uh, growth uh, is good? I like Thank it. you. Awesome. And have you read the books and watched the movies or the series or only the, only the movies? And internet is a uh, book. book, one book. Oh, one book. Yes, <laughs> yes. and in, in English. In, oh. In, in the moment is uh, in English and uh, with 
Google Traductor is. <laughs> Google Translator. Hey, yes, yes, yes. You know, you know what? Sorry, it's okay. It's fine. And the reason that I'm asking you this is because I haven't read the books, but then some books are better than the movies. If you have if you have read the books and then you go and watch the movies, you might get disappointed. Okay. Because I have had a chance to read a couple of books, not many, being honest. But then once I read this book and then I went to see the movie and I was like, mm, this is not what the book says. And then you start criticizing the movie. That's why I was asking if you have read the books and then watched the, the movies, if they're kind of like the same or they're not, they were not that creative when they were making the movie. Okay, that was my question. And is there any other opinion before we move on? I prefer see the movies. In my, in <laughs> okay. favorite, my, my, my favorite movies uh, are the all the Marvels. <laughs> okay, interesting. Yes. Yeah, 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 I think those ones are really cool. Brice, do you want to add anything? Yes. <laughs> I think she's amazing. The imagination um, she creates the stories inside the stories and it's beautiful. Mm. Um, I think that you say <laughs> um, read the books is different to see the, the movies. Okay, right, sometimes, right, it's different. And so, guys, whenever you have this feeling of giving up, remember this lady, J.K. Rowling. She had really bad times, like downs in her life, but she never gave up. Now we all enjoy of these movies because she never gave up. So we might have obstacles, we might have problems, we might have challenges, but then the final decision is up to you. It's up to you, like maybe now then you don't see the light, you don't see, you know, anything on your end or anything like uh, positive, but don't give up, keep fighting, fight for what you want. And there are many things that we have in, that we want to achieve. So for this reading on the platform, it has some questions and I wanted to explain in case you haven't done it. As you can see, we have numbers. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And in the reading, it tells you where in the reading mention this. And then you go ahead and say paragraph number one, paragraph number two, paragraph number three, and so on. So in case you haven't done this reading, go ahead and do it, okay? And you need to mention in the questions in which paragraph this idea is said okay so i invite you to go ahead and do that and if you have any vocabulary news from this topic please write it down on your notebooks okay memorize it use it in sentence use uh, use it in context create a sentence okay that's how you can start using it and also making it part of your uh, what your, your your vocabulary okay and do you have any comments or any question before we move on? I want to start with section number four, but I want to hear what questions do you have? No. Okay, you make it really easy. Okay, let's move on. Let's oh, talk, teacher. let's, uh-huh. What, what is the difference in, in, into, into modals and adverbs? Oh, modal verbs, it's, uh, well, a modal verbs doesn't have a meaning by themselves because a modal verb, we have could, we have should, we have may, we have might, and they are used in dif different scenarios, okay? So if, if, if to give an example, if I say, um, could you please, uh, talk about this topic, I'm using a modal verb, could. And could is, it, it says, could is to talk about formal situations, to be polite and blah, 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 so that's could. But we have all this list of modal verbs, could, may, should, and all those are modals. 
But then if we talk about adverbs, adverbs, it just modifies another verb. For example, we have adverbs of frequency, adverbs of time, adverbs of place, and the adverbs that we studied previously, which ends with L-Y. <laughs> so basically, adverbs is a very different topic. It doesn't have to do with modal verbs. Nothing, nothing they, they, they don't have anything in common. Two different, two different topics. Adverbs, for example, um, the teacher uh, speaks slowly. Slowly is my adverb. It's, it's, all, it's just making an emphasis or describing or modifying speak. So the adverb describes or modifies an action. The adverb modifies an adjective. The adverb modifies another adverb. That's an adverb. Okay, but then modal is a different story. We have a list of modals and then we can use them in a specific context, in a specific scenarios. So there are two different topics. Okay, where have you seen that? Or do you have any specific question in which you have seen this structure that you want to bring uh, to this class so we can discuss it? Yes, today it started the, the section four and 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 see the and see the this one and and, and I I don't understand the, the, this okay this, uh, okay all right we're gonna study today some adjectives and then uh, we're going to go step by step in until we get to that topic then okay maybe we we need to um just start taking a look or a, or a closer look to each one because we cannot compare the morals and adverse at the same time. And Maybe we can use them together. We can use them together, but the same sentence. Uh -huh. Go ahead, please. Can, can you uh, put in the screen the, the, the first, um, the first, ¿cómo sería? Lo primero de la sección cuatro. Sure. First part of section four. Yes. Let me let me do it right now. Section four. Here we go. The first the first on the on section four is what I was going to start displaying, but I want to go to the platform. Just a second, please. One second. Let me move on. Section four. Okay, this the first thing in here is what I was going to start working on today. Look at look at this. Section number four is adjectives, and this is what I was going to show you. Uh, this is uh, describing what feelings and gestures. That is the first topic, and then okay, okay the the second tips. The second one. Okay, give me a second. We're going to skip this one, guys, just because Alex is asking that, but it's totally fine. This one or th this one? I don't remember. <laughs> it's like, okay, maybe this is the one, uh, okay. But then what about if we uh, take a look at this one, the one that I have prepared for today or the one that I wanna cover. This is the first, uh, the first topic. And then we go into the other topics, okay? Because as you can see here, that's, that's 4.5 where we have models and adverbs and then uh when we get to that one and then we talk about it uh-huh 4.5 yes i can see it now it's 4.5 is models and adverbs so we cannot combine them okay because as we will see them in maybe context maybe in sentences but we cannot say that they're the same we cannot say that we can i can say they're different okay so we can talk about that. Maybe uh, we're gonna watch this tomorrow because I want to finish this this one, the first one. Okay. Have you finished this the first one, guys? Of, about feelings and gestures. Have you finished that one already? How do you say? Let me let me test. How do you say? <laughs> how do you say? Mm, how do you say? Así como, uh, how do you say? Uh, how do you say that? How do you say agarrarse el pelo and do this? Uh, 
How do you say? Disgusting. <laughs> That's disg disgusting is, uh, well, not, not exactly disgusting, okay? But let, let, me, let me show you what I wanted to say, okay? I promise tomorrow we'll talk about Alberts and Morals, okay? You'll see what I'm telling you. Alberts and Morals is a, to a totally different story. Maybe you have already studied about Alberts and, 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 and you don't remember, maybe the name. But then this is the, what I was telling you about. This is just an example, me turning up questions. And then this is the first topic. And this is what I wanted to tell you guys. Look at this. This is the first topic from, from section number four. He is biting his nails. Do you guys do that? Is that okay if you bite your nails? When do you bite your nails? Letter B. Letter B. Uh -huh. And when do you bite your nails? When I'm nervous. When you're nervous, okay. Yeah. Do you guys do that? I don't do that. Maybe what I do is something different. Um, and what about rolling? When do you roll your eyes? Look at this. He's rolling his eyes. The, the guy, letter C, is, is rolling his eyes. It's like maybe looking up and down and then to, to, the, to, the, to the sides, confused. to the left. Okay, when you're confused. confused. Okay, maybe. Exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah. Oh, disgusted. Is it disgusting? I think biting your nails or biting my nails is disgusting. I, I don't think it's okay, but then it's, it's just perception. Nervous. Nervous, okay. What about a scratch? Because I always see my little sister, you know, biting her nails. And she's not, she's not nervous. <laughs> That's, you know, an addiction. <laughs> and, and what about scratching? When do you scratch your head? Because this guy, letter F, is scratching his head. As you can see here, scratching. Like, rascándose la cabeza. When do you do that? When you scratch your head? Frustrated. Frustration. Okay. When you're frustrated. When when I confuse. When you are confused. Okay. Yeah. Why not? And what about tapping your foot? I remember my my ex <laughs> when I was because she's she's a psychologist. When I was tapping my foot on the ground, she said, "Oh, you want to leave now, right? You don't feel okay being here and blah blah blah." Because I like tapping your foot on the ground. When do you guys do that? When do you tap your foot on the ground? Do you understand tapping your foot? Tap, because this guy, uh, the number, I think is number letter, letter, what letter is? I don't see. A. Is it A? No, it's not. Patient. It's not a. Let me see. Oh, when you're impatient, letter yes. Letter, letter, letter E, right? Letter, letter, letter E. e. Yeah. When you are impatient, okay. You don't, okay. When, uh, when do you tap? Okay, impatient. Yeah. Uh, annoy. But you're annoyed, okay. <laughs> Instead of hitting the other person on, you know, you know where, you stop uh, run tapping. away. <laughs> on the face, fly, you slap on the face and blah. <laughs> what about twirling but his hair like this, twirling? Twirling means like making this action with your hair. When you are flirting, right? Do you know what flirt is? Embarrassing. Oh. Embarrassed? Okay, maybe. What a, okay, sure. And what about wrinkling his or your nose? Your nose, in this case, because he's wrinkling his nose, like doing this action. Like, wrinkle comes. Do you know what wrinkles is? Wrinkles. Is disgusting. You're disgusting. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I think you wrinkle your nose when you are disgusted. It's disgusted, right? You're not feeling comfortable. Okay, good. So maybe, guys, because it's already nine, you want to write this vocabulary down, and we talk about this tomorrow, okay? Because we only have one minute left. A screenshot this tomorrow. We talk about this image, and we talk about morals, and we talk about adverbs if if it is possible, okay? Okay. Um, do you have any questions okay. before we move on, before, before we finish? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you have questions, if you have questions, tomorrow. ask me tomorrow. <laughs> Bye-bye. Take care, please. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.